as you're walking down one of Ocean City's residential streets uh, on the way to where you're going, you hear eerie music coming from the upstairs window of a nearby house. Location unlocked, eerie music house. I'm gonna continue where I'm going though. But I'll remember it, we did quite the detour, but that's fine. All right, let's talk to him about the urn though. It's Charles Wallace. Hey, good to see you, uh, good to see you up. Uh, we've had quite a morning already. Uh, see that bookshelf over there? Just bought it. It's real, it's a real rare find, Jay. Came from a 17th century cargo ship, the Mustflower. Wow, that's quite a, a, a provenance for a, uh, for a bookshelf. Yeah, it was the ship's wheel. Captain uh, brought the must flower out of dock, couldn't steer, drove into a starfish, whole thing sank instantly. Anyways, uh, anything I can help you with? I saw your name in the visitor's book at St. Polycarp's. Oh sure, I do a little uh, whittling to pass the time now and again, and sometimes I go to St. Polycarp's to look at their gargoyles. Here, have one. Um, he opens his desk drawer and tosses you a little wooden gargoyle on a leather cord. A gargoyle charm. It's an accessory. Uh, a little wooden gargoyle on a leather strap, whittled by Charles Wallace. The base has the motto, keep on trucking, carved into it. Oh neat, thanks, plus one spooky armor. Let me ask you something. Uh, anything I can help you with? Charles seems preoccupied. He keeps checking his pockets and uh, drawers of his desk. Lose something? Yeah, it seems to have... Uh, it seems... Yeah, I seem to have misplaced the chuck key to my drill. What's a chuck key? What's a chuck key, Charles? What's a chuck key, Chucky? He raises his eyebrows. It's a little twisty thing for tightening the chuck on a, uh, on a drill. Any idea where you lost it? It can't have gotten too far. The cord on this thing got stuck uh, in the outlet and it's not long enough for me to drill anything that isn't in the neighborhood. I could help you look for it. Oh yeah, that would be great. Like I said, it's gotta be nearby. Just wander around. I'm sure it'll turn up. There's a button on your map labeled Wander. Uh, that will allow you to have a random encounter without going anywhere. You can also wander while looking at the map by pressing space. Sure, let's just do that. Uh, wander. A well-dressed man flags you down. Excuse me there, good citizen. Might I have a match? Uh, might you have a match on your person? I'm afraid not. Well, uh, that just won't do. Here, if you should, uh, here, if you should have cause to set something alight in the future. Uh, what if you should have cause to set something alight in the future? Here, take one of mine. I, uh, the man tips his head uh, to you and, uh, uh, and scurries off before you can thank him. What a strange ex uh, exchange. One more wonder. Uh, you notice a pile of yellowish white grit in the middle of the road, you catch a whiff of it and identify it as muscle corn. It must have fallen off a truck and then been run over by a series of different trucks. It's powerful stuff. You shouldn't let it go to waste. Collect it. You carefully separate the corn from the asphalt. Uh, like uh, it's like separating wheat from chaff, but with more uh, modern, but with a more modern spin on it. Powerful grit. Uh, even though it's just an inert powder, you're still pretty sure uh, it's going to bully you. Okay. Let's wonder once more. Charles Chuck Key, there we go. You see a glint of metal underneath a nearby bush. Hey, this must be the thing Charles Wallace lost. Uh, Charles Chuck Key, nice. Let's give it to him then. Uh, hey there, Jay. Any luck finding my chuck key? Yeah, I found it. That's it. Thank you. Bet you find it. Under a bush. Oh yeah, probably that bush I was drilling holes in the other day. Well now, 
What can I do for you? Nothing right now, Charles. Let's pat Calliope. That's wonderful. And Jessica. I found the watch. It was complicated. I'd be more surprised if you told me it was simple. Well, you know the drill. Strap it on and jump in the uncursing machine. It's a pocket watch. It doesn't... Just uncurse the thing and get some sleep, okay? You look like you've been through the ringer. I won't dispute that. Okay. Before we do that, I'm gonna have to take a really quick break. I'm gonna be right back. Uh, just gonna be a minute or two. And I am back. Alright, let's uncurse it then. Let's see where it takes us this time. You sit in the chair, which is surprisingly comfortable, and pull the weird metal dome thing o uh, down over your head. What would you like to uncurse today? The dangerous pocket watch. The machine snorts the pocket watch up into its dome and begins its strange and loud work. The pocket watch is pulled this way and that and uh, its ticks become tzits and its talks tzots and its three hands are forcibly bent back. You swear you hear screams. And then it's done. The watch falls into your lap. Hands down, set to um, 18.39.06. Yes, that's the time where I'm at right now. It's 6 in, uh, 6.39 in the afternoon. Uncursed uh, pocket watch. Um, offhand item, now that it's free of the taint of that shadow energy, it's just a boring regular watch. If you think about it though, being on time for things is kind of like a magic power. So it reduces an enemy's muscle, mysticality and moxie by three once per fight. That's nice. Um, the Watcher's Curse now resides within the machine. Want to project your consciousness into it? Yes, please. In your mind's eye, you see the hands of a pocket watch spin back on themselves with jittery violence. Uh, with each revolution, the face of the watch itself expands until it is larger than you and the buildings and the street. Your whole world lives in the blur of the fast running hands in which you see the life go by in reverse time. Submarines turn to longships, cities to stone dwellings, cowboys to uh, courtesans. You are traveling faster and faster to the beginning of time itself. And there's no telling where this ride will end. I'm gonna hold on tight. I'm... I'm a dinosaur? Hell yeah, I'm a dinosaur. I'm not gonna eat the cat, are you crazy? I'm gonna eat Charles though. Grark. Hey, easy does it baby, we're all hungry. Please help, I am a dinosaur. Yeah baby, yeah. I'm gonna eat Jessica. What strangers afflicts thee? Never mind, for the sun transits the horizon and I grow ever the more in need of thy assistance. Understand, whilst you sleep under this roof, thou art my lodger, and a signature of this paperwork is by me required. Why did you start talking like that? war. A provocative remark, friend, and by thee well made. Whoa there, hoss. What's got ya uh, all horns and rattles? Been dipping into the nose paint again? Gabby doesn't talk like that. Urgrrr. Sure is, partner. Sure is. <laughs> hey, Gabby, I'm a dinosaur. Argorf. whoop -a, pee pew Uh, hmm. The quickest straw in the West. Sure enough. Arr. I'm gonna... With those two salad forks? No, you lack the opposable thumbs necessary to turn a doorknob. Uh, you're completely contained in here, unless you figure out how to open doors. Is dexterity even a stat? Okay, open the door with 10 dexterity. I don't know anything about dexterity, I'm a dinosaur. Break the door down, I'm a big dinosaur. 
Hanf, you slap your prehistoric tummy against the wood, but it doesn't even make a dent. Maybe that's why the dinosaurs went instinct. Couldn't open doors. Rar. This is... Uh, to do. Open a door, eat a cat. Uh, add to the list with 8 dexterity. Unstitch the rug, 200 dexterity. I want to pet the cat. Oh, good thing it didn't actually get eaten. Uh, the way out to Plunkett Street, 10 dexterity? Check for messages. Um, you check the message pad next to the phone. There is a note for, for you, dinosaur, no phone number. I'm gonna eat the phone. Chomp. Uh, the chess set, the cosmic battle between light and dark, church and horses. Eat the chessboard. I'm gonna knock the chair over. One dexterity! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Let's knock everything over. Let's flip the table. There we go. That's more like it. Um, what can we do now? Talk to Charles. Real groovy pocket watch you've got there, Jay. I like the way it tick tick ticks. You understand me? Rar. Lot of power in that timepiece. Lot of power. Would you make a promise to me, baby? Would you promise not to throw that power away? Lot of good can be done with that groovy power, baby. Charles doesn't call me baby. Ah, rar. I hear ya, kitty cat. What do you say, kitty cat? Will you do me a promise? Promise not to throw away the groovy power in that timepiece? Uh, arg, narg, nor, huh? What's that, uh, Greta Garbled? Yeah, let's do it, man. Groovy kitty, absolutely smashing. Shake on it, kitty cat. Oh, uh, I don't have the dexterity for that. Okay, so that's the five dexter uh, dexterity. Open the desk drawer. Uh, you expend considerable effort wrang uh, wrangling your claw around the knob. Uh, only to find the drawer is locked. You gain one dexterity. What was the four dexterity thing then? Sorry cat. Can't read yet. Let's talk to her again. Uh, whilst, thou, uh, whilst thou tarry, good lodger, thy absen uh, the absence of thy John Hancock on my paperwork grows ever more urgent. Thy signature, if it pleases thee. Can you open the door for me? Snurg, urg. Curious indeed, for I do not believe those doors to be locked. Well, what do I know? Thou wilt find the telephone table thither, a key to satisfy thy needs. Eat the table. I forgot to read that. Oh, pull out the drawers. One dexterity. So we're at four now. Sorry, cat. I didn't want to scare you. I'm not gonna get out of the machine just yet. Let's talk to Gabby. Howdy, Trey. What you chewing on? Uh, snuff, uh, snuff for me. Same as always. Hehe. <laughs> Can you open the door for me? Nar, nar. Ooh. I don't know. Never had a head for puzzles, Jay. That's got me right funkified. Can I eat the chairs? Let's talk to Charles. Oh yeah, let's shake hands. Solid handshake, one dexterity. That means we can read books now. Let's read the paper. You pursue the newspapers. Claws making only minor holes in the pages. One dexterity. And one dexterity. That makes it eight, I think. Uh... I'm gonna add to the list. Your talents carve the letters HELP into the chalkboard. One more dexterity. That means we have nine, so we sign our name. You scrawl an uneasy line and gain one dexterity. Much obliged, Jay. And I hope for, uh, from now, thy sleep is all the more sweet for its legal correctitude. Sure. That leaves us at, at ten. Let's... Open the door. 
Why hello there. So we meet at last. With I looking the older man, though you are far older than I shall ever be. I... Uh, wow, I never saw this room before. Arr, arr, arr. We are the Alpha and the Omega. You the beginning of time and I its end. Will you walk with me, dear friend, to watch the death of our world and the birth of another? Um, I'm just trying to uncurse a pocket watch, pal. Oh. Oh, so that worked. Okay. I thought... So the other ones were probably just mostly jokes. Uh, tick, tick, tick. The hands of the uncursed pocket watch uh, beat on. Uh, boats with the uh, current uh, born correctly into the future. You pull the pocket watch out and look at it. It's gained some luster. Yes, the curse is lifted. Time is in its rightful home. Ooh, now it's actually stronger. Five... Wow, that's good. And you no longer have a tail. That's also good. I wish I had a tail. Me too, sometimes. Hell yeah. Let's talk. She looks busy, but then she always does. Um, you know what, let's, let's, let's just ask her. How is this helping find Murray? Uh, hey Jessica, not to dispute the importance of collecting these weird artifacts or anything, but I'm worried about Uncle Murray. How is this helping find him? Oh, I guess I didn't really explain that. See, the Detector 1000 is new. We only really got it running after Murray disappeared. He always searched out uh, artifacts in more hands-on ways. Research, networking, following rumors, that kind of thing. That last artifact he went after, it could be basically anywhere, but the Detectodron only detects the nearest artifact. I see, so you figure if we pick them up in order, eventually we'll get to the one that he was looking for. Right, I wish to, te uh, I I wish to hell he'd left a note about where he was going, but I guess he either thought it was too dangerous and didn't want us following, or he just rushed off all excited like a kid in a toy store. That's Murray for you. Yeah, that tracks. And... That letter from Uncle Murray was a real surprise. I didn't read it. What did it actually say? Basically, he just asked if I could come visit him because he needs help with something big and he knew I had an adventuresome spirit. Haha, <laughs> adventuresome spirit? Yeah, that's Murray, alright. I haven't seen him in ages. I haven't seen him in ages. I mean... I only ever saw him at Crimbo, and sometimes he, uh, he came with us when we went camping in the summer. But after I moved out to go to college, we kind of lost touch except for birthday cards. Uh, but you dropped everything to come see him? Um, I wasn't carrying anything of value to see Crazy Uncle Murray again, of course. Uh, does he still do that trick where he pulls five meat out of your ear? What? You. Yeah, it was super gross. I loved it when I was 10. Well, I bet he'll do it uh, if you ask him. If you can find him. Yeah, here's hoping. Alright. Oh yeah. Speak easy. Uh, let's... Alright, that's... The speak easy is... Um... Wait, that was an accident. Uh, you turn a street corner and duck behind the mailbox just in time to avoid being spotted by uh, three tin lizzies who are either squatting uh, on a stoop or stooping on a squat. We're gonna eavesdrop. Um, I'm bored. Uh, when's the last time we had a good rumble? Okay, we had that, uh, we had that one already. Um, what about the glocklings? Wanna fight some of them? They're too weird. Mm. Uh, let's fight them real quick. Why not? Leave my turtle alone, I tell ya. Alright, the turtle uh, did its thing and now it is my turn. One second, just some more tea to uh, help keep my voice stable. Mm. Alright, so this does six damage. The wrench 
Takes three usable ones per fight. Yeah, uh, let's not use that on a wrench. I'll throw a rock. And you get flipped. Wrench smack, force least damage, okay. Two damage. All right, you can take care of uh, Sink Dorothy. So like Tin Lizzy, Sink Dorothy. And uh, we have, okay. We have uh, Steel Annie the Rancher, okay. Steel Stephanie the, uh, the Welder, okay. I'm going to knock another one of those out of the sky. And then I'm going to flip Steel Annie the Rancher. Wrench smack, that's fine. You can... You just uh, yeah, you you slap the wrench out of the air. That's the only thing. It's actually gonna change anything majorly. Oh, that's beyond rude. Just doing that to a poor turtle. It doesn't deserve that. Okay, you get a rock. And you, you get flipped. And then you get the flap slap. This time with knuckles. Wonderful, 13 meat, five XP. And uh, now I'm gonna do what I actually wanted to do. Let's go to the uh, speakeasy real quick. So let's Talk to Fancy Dan. Uh, you find Oliver? Um, yes. Hmm, I don't like the sound of that. Oliver is gone. The handoff went extremely bad. Badly? Yeah, that too. You go over uh, the events at the fridge factory. Fancy Dan makes a variety of faces at various points in your story because Fancy Dan is a good listener. I'll show him the deed. Oliver was carrying this with him. Dan skims the deed. Hmm. Says here that ownership of the speakeasy is automatically transferred to whoever has physical possession of uh, the steed. Huh, is that legal? None of this is legal. Oh yeah. I guess you're my new boss, baby. Let's have one drink to mourn the old boss and another one to celebrate the new one. Good idea. I guess we ought to change the name then. Well, Oliver's place is no longer Oliver's place. I suppose that's right. Got any ideas? Well, you could go traditional and just say it's Jay's place. Uh, or something hip like the purple door. Or something incisive and avant-garde like, I don't know, noble, uh, noblesse, uh, noblesse oblige. Jay's place rhymes. And that's... Oh, I can name it something else. Um... Um, nah, Jay's place sounds good, honestly. It, 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 it rhymes, it, it rhymes, it's concise, it's, it's good. That's, that's a good one. Um, now to business. To business. We make the beer in-house, so that's safe. But we're out of everything else. Uh, and based on your story, I'd say the stuff at the factory isn't safe to use. Yeah. If you can find booze or mixes or garnishes, bring it back here. Any idea where to get started with that? No, but you might check with Barnaby. Barnaby? Uh, Dan points at the milky-eyed sod at the table by the wall. He doesn't see very well, but he's got a nose for news and a sixth sense for booze. He might know where you can find what you're looking for. Thanks. All right. Uh, he turns his head towards you and smiles. Let's buy him a drink. Um, okay, yeah, th that uh, seems helpful. Uh, they try, but they'll never da uh, dam up the flow. I'll leave him to his milkiness. Unless we find a, a dam of sorts. Um, I don't think we're gonna be very successful here. 
Ooh. Oh, I need five hobo knowledge. Well, we're not there yet. There's a door here. It won't budge. A barge shut from the other side. All right. Let's return to the uh, Murray's Antiques. Nestle among the books and papers is a book of old, but still valid postage. Uh, a book of old, but still valid postage stamps with a few missing. They're surrounded with a haze of weird shadowy energy, but you can still clearly see the illustrations of cute dogs on them. Wait a minute, cute dogs? That's just like the stamp that survived the luggage fire. Oh dang, of course. That stamp is what destroyed your luggage. And your best stuff was in there. Your clothes, your teddy bear. That tears it. This shadow business has become personal. I mean, it was personal already because of Mary being your uncle and all. But now it's extra personal. Grr. What's up? These stamps. These stamps have shadow gunk on them. And one of them killed my luggage. Oh my gosh. I guess that was my fault. I ran out of stamps and found those inside of Murray's desk. I didn't even think to test them. I'm so sorry. It's not your fault. It's whatever is causing this damn shadow stuff. I'm definitely going to put a stop to it though. Wait, how many of these stamps have you used? Just the one, thankfully. The rest must have already been gone when Murray found them. Well, that's good news at least. I, I thought I saw some gunk there. Hey Jay, before you go to bed, I need you to approve a new tenant uh, for the storefront next door. What? Why is that up to me? Uh, somebody got to do it. Uh, there's three uh, applicants for the place. Okay, what are they? The first applicant is advanced pants. It doesn't say what they plan on selling, but I have to assume that it's pants. The second is uh, truncheons and uh, truncheons and, uh, and bludgeons. This fella is really excited about weaponry. The last applicant is Bertram's Bakery. Uh, Bert's a buddy of mine from my restaurant days. He makes a good loaf. Um. What's gonna be the most useful? I mean, weapons sounds good because we constantly, you know, wear our weapons down and uh, having like a supply of more weapons would be nice. Um, the pants store would be fun and the bakery would be nice for, uh, for Charles. Mm, let's go with the weapons store. Okay, I'll get him moved in and get the next storefront ready for applicants. Thanks, Charles. Hey, it's that rug from the boarding house. Miss Brewster must have had it uh, sent to you as an additional gesture of gratitude. Or because she hates the way it looks and thinks it's cursed. Either way, score. That's nice. Let's go to sleep then.